it's really incredible and I still can't quite believe that we're on the list. It's just something that you never even think that you'd be a part of. It hasn't even hit me yet. I'm just super excited that there's going to be a little light shone on what I'm doing. It's an amazing feeling to be, to be recognised, you know. Being on the sound of 2015, that was like, sick. I was like, yes, everything's going to plan. Since 2003, the BBC has called upon the UK's finest music journalists, presenters and producers to vote on the new music acts that we should all be listening out for. It's basically a list for up-and-coming talent who need the extra push. It gives a whole new platform for these artists who might not otherwise have reached this whole new audience. And thanks to the list, made up from the top 15 nominations, performers such as Adele, Ellie Goulding and Sam Smith have been rapidly brought to our attention. The sound poll was genuinely something I didn't think I was going to get. I didn't think I was cool enough. Mm. I didn't think my music was, was liked enough by, by the people who were voting for it. I just didn't. And I was completely shocked to get it. We've travelled around the UK and beyond to catch this year's nominees as they write, record and perform the songs that will most definitely feature on the soundtrack to life in 2015. From the thousands of new music acts out there, the Sound of 2015 nominees were chosen because their sound especially stood out from the crowd. And for this year's acts, how they get their ideas and turn them into reality is as unique as the resulting sound. Is it desire? Or is it not that I'm feeling for you? I want desire. Cos your love only gets me abused. The writing process kind of varies, sort of, with each song. We usually come in with a demo. I usually transfer a lot of sounds and beats and things that I've made on my laptop. And then we start building it up. Ollie will usually lay down a guide vocal. A lot of them I started writing on the piano because that's how I always have written songs. And the reason I'm writing songs is because I want to say something about my life that's, you know, kind of a sort of form of therapy in a way. And um, I just want it to be some kind of honest kind of communication. <laughs> I'm usually last to put the bass line in. Sometimes I have you guys <laughs> watching over <laughs> it. <laughs> like vocally telling me, oh, you should play this. Yeah, it's quite stressful. I have to sing by myself now because I get too stressed. I'm really. thinking of doing the bass lines by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you just phone all our parts. Yeah. yeah. South Londoner Quabbs' journey towards success began when he was chosen to be mentored by the likes of singer Keris Matthews as part of the TV show Goldie's Band. A lost child, my future me. More than four years later, and Quabbs' songwriting talents are continuing to go from strength to strength. Words, they just they change everything, you know, they can they can really shape how you, you see things and how you see the world. And I feel like you have to be really careful with them because they're so delicate and that's what the poetry is all about. It's about articulating what my story is and what I'm trying to put across in a way that invokes people's imagination, but also sends a message to them in a way that is really clear, you know, and, and accessible. Born in Northern Ireland, 18-year-old Soak is one of the youngest nominees on the Sound of 2015 list. I've been songwriting since I was like 12, 13. 
Up until recently, like my main purpose for writing songs would have been to like explain myself in an emotional way, like without directly having to say anything. Like I was an extremely shy young person and I just didn't like talking. Like just the whole idea of that just made me feel sick and uncomfortable and well, that's how I started writing. And then now I think most people have gone through what I write about because it's just, you know, I suppose the moment, teenage life and everything that comes with it. This is my bedroom and we're here because this is where I make most of my tunes or at least where they start out as kind of little ideas and forays into craziness. <laughs> Shura's self-directed and edited video brought her breakthrough track, Touch, to over 4 million YouTube viewers. It is so weird to describe your creative process because it is so different. Sometimes I have a melody and no lyrics and I, and I come up with fake lyrics and they'll be really naff and sometimes half of them will stay in and you've kind of half unnaffed them or sometimes you haven't ever unnaffed them and you still think, oh God, I can't believe that lyric has ended up in it. But in a way it was true and of the moment and sometimes changing that to sound cooler is, is so anti kind of you. We always write 50-50. Either one of us is like useless without the other really. We're a partnership. Yeah. In the sleepy commuter town of Tunbridge Wells, slaves members Isaac and Laurie first met at what was once Europe's largest public toilet. The Tunbridge Wells Forum is now a local gig venue and recording studio. After you, mate. Oh, thank you, mate. This is the uh, Tunbridge Wells Forum studio. This is where we recorded all of our first demos and songs. We sat on that sofa and ate multi-pack after multi-pack of hula hoops till our mouths bled. Where's your car, Debbie? Debbie, where's your car? Is it far, Debbie? This is sort of like modern-day, middle-class suburbia. We're not like working-class punks or anything, but I think our music comes from this very mundane, normal, suburban. everyday observations. Because Where Where's Your Car Debbie is about the rumours that there was a Bigfoot in the woods over there. <laughs> A classically trained pianist, Lapsley was still studying for her A-levels when her bedroom-produced tracks started to get noticed. Lapsley's my middle name, and um, because I, I came from more classical background, but I used to listen to electronic music. I wanted to create music that was in the middle, and I didn't know how to go about it. So I literally just got on GarageBand and bought a synth and just gave it my best shot, like turning acoustic songs that I've written into more electronic songs. I see vocals not just as like explaining like your emotions or whatever, I see it as like an instrument. So. If I have different pitches and different tones and then I interlink them together, it makes it more exciting. First of all, I'll record the vocals in normally. And then I'll change using the vocal transformer, uh, the sound. So I basically experimented with that and, and uh, yeah, I just really preferred the drop vocals for that and also sounds like a man. I just kind of make it up as I go along. I mean, I'm learning all the time. <laughs> Fade out. Back in North London, Wolf Alice are busy finishing their debut album with one of the best rock producers in the business. 
Mike Crossy is a legend. legend. Okay, yeah. let's give it a go. <laughs> he did first Jake Bug record. He did the second Arctic Monkeys record. It's one of the first times someone's been able to really realise our sound mm. in a studio because you have these ideas in your head and it's really difficult to pretty much get them out exactly how you want them. Ready for the big bit? Smash it. <laughs> Normally we'd record with everyone to start with and then eventually we'd separate everyone off and do overdubs on top. We've been trying to make quite an eclectic album, so each track's had a very different approach. But on, in this case, that's how we've been working. It's been like really satisfying experience, and it's been really enjoyable. We've been having such a good time here. Yeah, it feels like a little second home at the moment. Cool. I think that's nailed, man. Novelist is the youngest member of the Sound of 2015 list and his South London home plays an important part in his music. I always talk about being from Lucian in my lyrics because I want other people in Lucian to feel like they can do something. I come from the road. All of my family come from the road. And it's not a thing of animosity. No one's really angry. It's about just representing where you're from. Like, big up all the other areas as well. It's not really a thing of segregating. Prem, that's my road. But it's like, I'm from here. I want to let you know I'm from here. These guys are from here as well, innit? This is what we do down here. Getting the tracks on record is one half of the story, but the daunting task of revealing your deepest emotions on stage and presenting your music in tune to a live and unsuspecting audience is enough to make even the most confident of artists feel weak at the knees. I used to be completely terrified. Like, I didn't know how I was going to perform live. In the back of my mind, I was like, when it's time to perform, like, what's, what's actually going to go down? <laughs> In our first gig, I didn't face the audience. Yeah. I was so scared. And there was just like 12, 15 people. <laughs> With every show you do, you get better and you get more confident and you get more ideas. And you know, I think for me, I'm not so scared to try stuff. Weekends and cheap thrills. it all for a niche of fun. For a long time, I was afraid to get into the song too much because, like, it's just a hard thing sometimes to kind of put a song across that means so much and has so much in it. I think performing on stage takes the whole writing process to another level. Diana, she loved me. It sort of extends it, you know, you, you make the song and then you imagine how you want it to be heard, but then to go on stage and then to see how people react to it, you know, that's a, that's a whole different thing altogether. This goes out to you, to you, to you and you. If I can do it, you can too. If I can do it, George the Poet started out as a grime artist, speaking over tracks that play at 140 beats per minute. But through touring his new EP, The Chicken and the Egg, his distinctive sound has been evolving. I've put a lot of work into my lyrics. There are a lot of double entendres, there's a lot of wordplay, there's a lot of metaphorical imageries, and every time I went on the stage, I, I left disappointed and I decided to perform my poetry without music because the communication is there the communication is at the forefront when you just speak it patiently conversationally people get way too comfortable talking and tweeting all of that stops when I walk in a meeting if my manager says something talk to him but other than that you're talking to me King so I've been going on tour around the UK to different universities unpacking the content of my EP and the chicken and egg pioneers the technique of making poetry in musical form. And so now I'm in a position to do both. There's no doubt in my brain that you can change the world. I'd go out on my way to prove it, they can tell. 
But if the stake's too high, you've got to take it down. Because you only live once. You've got to make it count. A self-professed revolutionary, Rory first broke onto the American music scene by attempting to take a guerrilla style approach to his live performances. Wait, what are you here for Style Maui? Make some noise, Style Maui! Go! Go! When I first started, we'd literally show up at random, you know, um, shows of, you know, really established artists that have, like, fan bases that I believe has, like, the type of ear to understand my kind of music. So we'd show up at their, um, shows like without any type of permission, with like this 10 foot U-Haul truck. And I get up and perform God's Whisper after um, the guys, whoever's performing. Once their show is over, like there'll be a really big let out. You know, like people just, act, they're just standing around, you know, they're bored. And you know, I was the next thing, you know? So I was literally, I literally performed God's Whisper and get out of there before the cops could shut me down. <laughs> on stage in front of an audience, that's always been what I live and breathe and like why I do it. So today we're in Sensible Studios um, where I rehearse with my band. Like this in a rehearsal is really weird because you kind of feel like you're on your own and there's nobody listening and you can kind of make as many mistakes as possible and, and just really flesh things out and, and go for it. But I guess when it's live, you've got to, you've got to get it right, you've got one chance. Um, but there's always a kind of special pressure in the, in the moment that comes from a, a real live performance. Performing so... It's so energetic and it's so spiritual in the sense where it's like you're feeding off the crowd and they're feeding off of you. So I don't think you can ever predict what's going to happen in the performance. South Londoner Stormzy learned his performance techniques through rap battles against his classmates in Croydon. As a young MC when I was at 13, 14, like, that's all we wanted to do was clash. You just wanted to be the best. You want to claim that, like, yeah, I'm the best in my area, you know what I'm saying? That's the training ground. That is actually the training ground. That's the, that's the battleground. That's where, that's where you come up from. From marathon clashing sessions in the park, Stormzy's fame continued to grow, and before long, Charlie Sloth invited him to take part in his Radio 1 and 1 Extra show. My favourite part of the show... Fire in the booth. Fire in the booth. Sorry for myself, Stormzy, everyone inside. Yo! Fire in the booth, Cypher, was... That was mad. The energy in that room was so different, like... And amongst all the, the, the conversation and the chat, there was almost a silence in the room of, like, it's wartime. Lord, help me, man, I outrageous. Somebody stopped them, needed a favour. Tell them I blocked them, funnel the haters. I do not watch them. I am the saviour, I am the problem. I've come here to be better than you. I've come here to out-rap you. I've come here to out, do you know what I mean? And everyone just went for it. But when the BBC's most established music show called, the pressure almost got the better of him. Now, we are welcome, delighted to welcome, a mobile winner, grime artist. It is Stormzy! Yo, Jules Holland, my soul Stormzy, wicked skank man live in the flesh, DJ Tiny, what are we saying? With that performance, we probably rehearsed it about 12 times and we didn't get it right once. Like, it was, it was a shambles. I remember sitting there thinking, we're about to go on live national television, BBC Two. There's no room for error, so like, let's make this right. I'm not the one you can move to. I only lap when I choose to. Hop in my car, connect my phone to my Bluetooth. This ain't a flow that they used to. I get stopped on the roads that rock. My man's hard, swear my man's off of YouTube. Come from below, then I blow like I'm due to. How we managed to pull it out of the bag, Tiny was perfect, like, I managed to get all the words out right. That's the beauty of it, I guess, that's the beauty of it. Like, when it's go time, you have to, you have to perform, you have to be ready.
When we played the first Reading and Leeds, that was mind blowing. We started off playing to like a handful of people, and then just as people started like walking past, we ended up with this huge audience, and it was just quite hard to process at the time. <laughs> When I look back at the footage, it still doesn't really feel like that was us. It was kind of like just such a crazy, out-of-body sort of experience. But that was the first time it felt like we were getting somewhere. Thank you so much for having us, Glastonbury. We will balance. And the ultimate performance test for any new artist has to include playing at the world-famous Glastonbury Festival. Glastonbury was probably the scariest gig I've ever played in my life. Usually you usually get nervous and then you're like, you're You'll play a little bit and you know that you actually can make sound. You physically can remember where yeah. your hands go and stuff. So but it, it just didn't, it, the, the nerves didn't go away at all, that show. Thanks to the sound of 2015 voters, all eyes are now on the nominees. But being on the list is just the beginning. If you are in the top 15, you've got a lot to live up to. You know, you're getting seen by a lot of people. And you know that if someone wins that, then they're going to go on and do something big in the following year. So there is a lot of pressure, but it's good pressure. For me, the next stage is opening up this music to a whole lot more people. I've got a purpose. Like, I have a purpose. People like my music, so now I have to make more for you. Next year? Hmm. I, I, I don't know, man. Thinking about next month is scary. We'll all be just burnt out shells of human beings. <laughs> no, that's not the right answer. <laughs> it's just about doing a lot of gigs and um, just getting out there and, and, and playing the songs to, to people. And yeah, really excited. <laughs> But I just know like, I will definitely be millions of steps forward for where I am now. I think this will be the year of my life that I always remember. Yeah.